Hello everybody, welcome to today's webinar all about OnlyOffice's workspace. My name is Fernando Silva and I'm gonna be your host today explaining everything that has to do with OnlyOffice's brand new feature and product, DocSpace. Some of those things will include how to configure your space, create and use rooms, invite users, and of course, work with all those documents. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, everyone, so let's get started. I quickly wanted to show the OnlyOffice DocSpace website and OnlyOffice DocSpace is an online collaborative office suite that enables users to create, edit, and collaborate on documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and forms in real time within a customized team space. So it offers a comprehensive range of tools for working with documents, including creating, editing, sharing, commenting, version control, change tracking, and multi-level access. So it pretty much has everything that you would need from a collaborative workspace built into one application. So DocSpace permits users to work with various file formats, including Microsoft Office documents, Open Docs, PDFs, and much more. It also incorporates advanced collaboration features like co-authoring, real-time chat, version history, and access to rights management. So again, everything that you would need from a collaboration software, and it's absolutely free. So OnlyOffice DocSpace operates within a room-based environment where all documents are stored, shared, and edited within a designated room. With different user roles, it is possible to customize access permissions to secure the overall environment and the files utilized by DocSpace teams and individual users. And what's nice about DocSpace is that it's built into the OnlyOffice application already. So you can see on my screen, I have the OnlyOffice app ready to go and I'm gonna connect to cloud right here. You either sign into one that already exists or you add a cloud right here to create a cloud. You just create a new cloud office URL and then connect to it. But I already have one connected, so I'm signing in and this is the environment. So let's have a quick tour around the interface. In the front, we see different sections of DocSpace. So you have your My Documents section, you have your rooms, your archive, your trash, accounts, and settings. So this is where you're gonna live and kind of manipulate and manage everything that you need. In the My Documents section, you can create, edit, and manage your own documents to work on personal tasks or share these documents with others via the rooms, which you're gonna to touch on in a little bit. So then rooms, this section is a place where you can access all the rooms available to you, both the ones that you create on your own and the ones that you've been invited to. So the more rooms that you have in here that you're invited to, the more access and the more accessibility you're gonna have. Then you have the archive is where the unused rooms can be stored in order to keep the doc space clean, yet retain all the data. So if you wanna move a room where you're not really using it too often, but you still wanna retain that data, you move it into the archive. Then you have your account section. So this place is a place where you can browse, search, and manage users, as well as create new ones and send invitations. Viewing and managing accounts is only available to admins. So you gotta make sure you are an admin in order to actually use this. So the settings section contains two separate menus, one for the room manager settings where admins can change room specific settings in DocSpace, and the other for the my document section settings where you can adjust personal parameters for the documents in the corresponding sections. There are also DocSpace settings located in the menu in the bottom left corner, which is down here where your name is, behind the three dot icon, but we're gonna touch and come back to this in a little bit, but just to give you an idea, this is what you're looking at in terms of the actual settings and customization. So now that we got all that out of the way, the setup process for DocSpace begins with establishing teams. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the account section. So let's invite a user to the DocSpace to start building our team. We need to head to the account section to manage these users. So users can be invited to your DocSpace either through email or by sharing a link. And you go right here to the plus sign to actually add those users. Additionally, external users can be directly invited to a specific room, which will save you time. But here's where you invite users and then you'll be able to send them via email or via a link. There are several roles that can be assigned to the new users of the doc space. So let's walk you through what those permissions are. So the first one is an owner. So this role is automatically given to the user who creates the doc space. So for example, in this scenario, I would be the owner. Owners have full and complete access to all the settings, user management controls, and other privileges within the doc space itself. And then in this plus sign, the first one that you see that you can invite is a doc space admin. This role can be granted to the user who needs access to manage the doc space, rooms, and users along with the owner. However, DocSpace admins do not have access to certain critical settings such as the DocSpace removal and cannot manage other DocSpace admins. So it's pretty much has everything that the owner has minus the ability to completely delete the room. So I do wanna show this off in real time. So if we actually invite one of my other emails as a DocSpace admin, so I will copy that and then I will go into a separate window which I'll bring up right here, put that in there, press enter, and then you can see on the screen that I'm now under a different account, but I have access to create rooms, 
for ourselves, but I cannot actually delete anything moving forward. But if I go back to the actual application, I'm gonna go over what these other rules mean. So these, the next rule that we have right here is the actual room admin. So room admin is appointed to delegate the administrative tasks within specific rooms in DocSpace. They have access to room creation, room settings, and can invite users to the respective rooms. Then you have the power user. So the power user is important to distinguish between general users and power users. Power users can create and edit documents and they have their own personal space dedicated to working with the documents non-admin users. Versus non-admin users on the other hand can only access the rooms they're invited to. And then you have, like I mentioned, the regular user. So a general user does not have the ability to create or store their own documents. They only have access to the rooms that they are invited to where they can collaborate on existing documents. This rule provides a secure way to work with external collaborators. And then general users can be invited to doc spaces an unlimited amount of times and can assume different roles within rooms. So a user is somebody that you invite from an outside organization that has edit access for those documents. So now what I wanna do is add a power user via an external link. So if I add a power user, Let's click on this little toggle right here. It creates something. I'm gonna copy it so we're able to use it. Well, let's go back in here. And then as you can see, we're back into the same room format. So now let's learn how to create a room. And for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory, but in DocSpace, rooms serve as group spaces where team members can easily share files without having to repeatedly grant access to them. These rooms allow for efficient collaboration by providing preset levels of access to each team member. This way you can create dedicated spaces for various tasks, including sales team collaboration, client communication, document review and approval, and finally, contract completion. So there are two types of rooms that are available in DocSpace at the moment, collaboration rooms and then a custom room. More types of rooms should be coming within the next few releases, but for now, let's focus on these two. So you're gonna go, go into your room section over here on the left-hand side, and then if you wanna create a collaboration room first, you're gonna to have to go in here, press this plus button, and then go into collaboration room. So you're gonna enter the collaboration name here. We're gonna type in test, test, and we're gonna press create. So collaboration rooms are ideal for teamwork when participants need to co-edit documents and utilize all available collaboration tools. However, this doesn't mean that documents, spreadsheets, and presentations within this room will be shared with full access to everyone. So in addition to the room admin and power user roles, you can also select the editor or viewer roles to control the access. So if you require more precise control over the access, we recommend choosing a custom room option. So that's what we're gonna try next. We're gonna press back here. So this is one of our rooms. This is the new room interface. We're gonna press this plus sign and then press the custom rooms. So custom rooms allow you to apply different levels of access to collaboration features, making them highly versatile. So within custom rooms, you can assign roles such as reviewer for access to reviewing features only, commenter for commenting purposes, and form filler for filling out forms. By using this custom room, you can tailor the collaboration space to specific needs, such as client communication and file sharing, allowing for fine tuning of access and collaboration features. So this is how you create a custom room. It's very similar to creating a regular collaboration room, but let's do test custom here, and we'll name it as such, test v1. We're gonna press create, and then you have your custom room all created. So now we need to invite people to the room. So we can add both external users and existing DocSpace users. For your team members, you can provide full editing access if you require their active contribution. On the other hand, for clients, you can choose different permission levels based on their respective roles and responsibilities. So there's a couple ways to add people. You can add people by inviting user to a room down here, and you can actually choose from a list of people. So I can invite some of my other people that I've actually are in my organization. I press add, so now those people are room admins, but then I can also change what their roles are within this menu right here. And then you can also, like I said, go into here and invite users this way, and you can actually edit the room from here as well. And in terms of the available roles in the room, it's very similar to what we spoke about before. You have a room admin, which appoints a room admin to delegate admin work in certain rooms in your doc space. Room admins have access to the room creation and room settings and can invite users to their own rooms. And then as we're explaining this, I'm going to add myself again. So I'm gonna choose from list. We're gonna add these two users. And then down here, you have different actual options to decide what kind of roles they want. So you can have the room admin, like we mentioned, the power user, like I mentioned, you can have an editor, which is a user with editor role, has, has full editing access to documents within their assigned rooms. This allows for you to invite unlimited number of guest users. Then you have the form filler, which is pretty self-explanatory. They'll have access to filling out forms. Then you have the reviewer. Uh, is a user assigned as a reviewer role will, will work within the track changes made to add suggestions and contain and content to the document. All, all changes are tracked and highlighted within the respective user's color and name. The commenter role is ideal for users who need to provide feedback or ask questions for collaborators, and commenters can communicate through comments while leaving document content untouched. So let's give them the reviewer role. We'll press add, we'll press send invitation, and then those users have been invited. And if I go back over here, 
maybe refresh this, I should have an invitation to a new room within my only office setup. So you can see that this is the view from my other environment. So you can see that now I have access to this custom room. So if I click into it, this is the custom room. So let's say I go in here, let's create a new document, create a test document. So it's opening. Just to give you an idea, we'll press test. And we'll X out of that because it is now created. And then it should pop up here. And as you can see, I now have access to this document that does say test right there through the web portal version of this document. But now let's see how you can manage and customize your doc space. So, so as I mentioned earlier, we're going to go back here to the bottom left corner of your actual dashboard. And in the doc space settings, you can manage the general settings, customize doc space, add security features, integrate apps, perform backups, and everything else. So if I go into the doc space settings, this is everything that you're dealing with. You have DNS settings, doc space renaming, you have the branding on here, which is great. And then you have the appearance as well. But as I mentioned, you do have the security, you're able to back up everything as well. You can restore, you can integrate, you have your developer tools, and then you have your doc space deletion as well. So if you go back to the customizations, we do have three setting menus. We have general, branding, and appearance. In the general settings, you have the ability to customize various aspects of your doc space. The this includes setting the preferred language and time zone, modifying the doc space name, assigning a new URL, and providing a description that will just be displayed to the welcome page for your users. So if I go down here, We can save that. You can change the space name as well. You can change the time zone to make it this. We'll save that. And these are just some changes that you can make along the way. And then you have the branding sections. So in the branding section, you have the option to select logos that will be consistently displayed throughout the doc space. These logos can be dynamically changed based on the interface, these themes chosen by users. So these are all the logos that are pre-built into the customization. And you can change the logo to whatever you see fit. Then in the appearance settings, you have the ability to manually select and customize the colors of different interface elements. And this allows you to align the visual appearance of your space with your brand's unique style. So if you wanna make it an orange color, make it a dark theme, you can save that and then things should change. So settings have been updated, which is good to go. And now let's get into the security section. So if I go into security, the security of your data is a priority to only office in addition to the permission levels that can be assigned to the doc space, users within rooms, there's additional settings that are available to enhance the safety and protection of your space. So within security settings, it's important to configure access to your doc space with caution. You have the ability to customize password requirements, implement IP restrictions, enable 2FA, two-factor authentication for added security, configure session lifetime, and utilize other security features to safeguard your data. So now that we have all that out of the way, last but not least, let's have a look at the available additions or versions of OnlyOffice Doc Space that is available for free for small teams without any limitations for inviting standard users. And when you need a little bit more admin power and collaborators inside of the team, as well as scalability and professional support, you can opt in for the business plan. So you have the free version and then $15 per admin slash power user. And you can also request a quote if you're gonna have more. So at the moment, Doc Space is available in the cloud and very soon to be self-hosted version that will be released. So as you can see, you have one admin user, two power users, up to 12 rooms, unlimited users in each room, two gigs per space in terms of file storage, and then community via forum. And then for the paid version, it's unlimited for pretty much everything. You get 100 gigs of file storage and the ability to actually brand everything the way that you want to. So that was only Office in a nutshell. In summary, it is a web-based collaborative office suite that allows users to create, edit, and collaborate on documents spreadsheets, as well as presentations and forms in real time, all within customized team rooms. It offers a complete set of tools for document management, as well as supports various file formats. The system allows for inviting users with different roles and access levels. DocSpace provides features for fine tuning collaboration spaces, customizing access levels and controlling all permissions. The platform also offers settings for space customization, security configuration to ensure a safe and secure work environment. So for now, everybody, enjoy using DocSpace. Thank you for your attention. Write your comments down in the description below. So if you have any questions, we'll be down there answering those comments for you. And we'll be sure to answer those comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to stay up to date with the new features and tutorials. And until next time, everybody, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.